engine, uh, Carlo Chili's, he's putting it on a hats biplane. So we're all set up, ready to go. I've got some fuel up there. There's the engine. There's his uh, data sheet or test run sheet that we use for uh, going through various things. And so uh, just come around here and have a quick look at what we've got going here. So here's our test club we use. It's a three blade prop, which gives us plenty of clearance. So this is a brand new engine, it's never run. And uh, just got a sort of, I've just got a, a large model aeroplane servo there driving the mixture control on the TBI. Um, and uh, actually a, a control cable going through to the, through the booth for the, uh, the throttle control. This test stand's run thousands of engines, so it's a little bit rugged, but it's, uh, it still works. So we've got a big oil tank at the back here with a sight glass, fresh oil in this, uh, this tank now. We normally run uh, engines, run the oil for about 10 hours per, per um, Till we change the oil. Uh, obviously, new engines shed more material, so we change it quite regularly. It's actually brand new oil there. And uh, we've got to have plumbing and fuel lines there and bits and pieces. We've got a snorkel taking fresh air from outside through a filter and um, to the TBI. It seems to work okay. And then we've got a I've got a large motorcycle oil cooler down here, which is plumbed through the scavenge pump. Uh, the electric scavenge pump and they've got flexible exhaust couplings there so I can easily uh, attach the four inch pipe to the, the rear where there's a large silencer outside and then right have we got round on this side you see how we use springs to just uh, pull those um, flexible exhaust couplers up what's interesting on this particular engine uh, for a while we've been running this twin port um, mini sump you see it's beautifully made um, it's all machined and welded flush and it's got two two tig welded ports now so you don't have to take the scavenge from the from the sump plug anymore so the sump plug can be left alone and we instead instead uh, take the um take the uh the two scavenge ports from the rear so the one on the bottom there is a um the mechanical scavenge pump and the one on the top is an auxiliary scavenge pump or a clean kit going to an electric pump and that's actually running, that filter doesn't need to be there because in fact, we've got a gauze filter on both those pickups. Um, so that's, uh, this has just been left there for the thing because it was there. Um, you see the TBI tucked up in there and there's a little hole drilled right at the bottom of that plastic pipe there. And that's when we prime, we look for oil, fuel to just drip out of that. And once fuel starts dripping out of that, we know we've got fuel primed. Now, right in between the um, the coupler there, this is our coupler. It won't come with the engine. He'll get a brand new one. But what we've done is I've snuck a little pipe, brass pipe. See if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, there you go. Right in between the, the two hose clamps, I've attached a, um, I've just pierced a, a, a three eighth, uh, sorry, one eighth, three millimeter brass tube, which I fashioned a barb on the end of it. And on the other side, I've, I've soldered a, washer and uh, flared it so if the solder would break it won't go in the engine um, and that is actually a manifold pressure port so I mean if you're a bit more serious you might drill and tap or the TBI on the aft area or even on the manifold itself but that's good enough for us and to be frank you could put that on an airplane like that There'd be nothing wrong with that also on the intake pipes here you see now I've got these little ball drains they'll actually go with the engine if people want to improve on that design or use metal ones they can but i can't see any reason why you wouldn't there's enough distance below the pipe there if you attach a nipple and route that away and there's a little five millimeter ball in there that actually sucks up when the engine runs and drops down when it shuts down so it automatically takes care of draining those intake pipes same on the other side there's actually three of those in in total um and so we don't put the wing nuts on anymore simply because customers tend to forget and if you forget to drain those intake pipes it can be fatal for conrod bending, which is pretty standard on radial engines. Um, so yeah, automatic intake drains now. And again, if the customer wants to improve them, well, that's up to them. But they work perfectly fine as is. And as I said, there's enough distance on the bottom of the nipple there, or that hose there, that neoprene hose for you to attach a nipple and route it to a convenient spot. So you can do that quite easily. So there we go. So we're pretty much all set to go here. So um, this engine has literally not run. You can see the exhaust, it's got no colorings on it whatsoever. And so um, let's see what happens. 
Okay, next time we come back, I'll have the camera set up and we'll get some fuel into it and I'll prime it, hand prop it and fire it up.